This is the practice test for Algebra 2 for Chapter 9. Um, so you take a look at this and you'll see it's, it's set up just like it's going to be on the test. And it says for these first two, determine whether each sequence is arithmetic, uh, geometric or neither. And remember arithmetic is just a fancy way of saying arithmetic here. Write a recursive and an explicit formula for each sequence, then find the tenth term. So at this point, if you want to give these a try, let me scroll it up just a little bit. Give these two a try. Go ahead and pause the video. All right, I'll go ahead and start on these now. The first thing I want to figure out is whether or not they are adding or multiplying, or maybe they're not doing either one. That's the neither piece. So for number one, I see the numbers are going up, and I check, and I notice that from 23 to 29, they're adding 6. 29 to 35, that's also adding 6. 35 to 41, that is also adding 6. So this is an arithmetic, which is arithmetic. They were adding for each one. So I go to my sheet that I get on my test, and I notice recursive says I have to give them the first term. And I'll put this in the slot here. And that's 23. But then I have a comma here because I also have to give them the rule. And that rule would be to find any term, take the previous term, and just add 6. So that takes care of the recursive. But the explicit, we have to go back and use our rule for writing explicit. And again, this will be on the um, formula sheet that you get for the test. So we need to put in the first term. And we need to put in what they're adding each time, which was the 6. Then we distribute from the right-hand side. And that will give us 6n plus 17. Now this whole thing is the rule. So you have to use that notation a sub n. Remember, it needs to be lowercase letters. That's the way it's done. That's the way it's been done historically. We do not get to change that. And then we have to figure out what a sub 10 is, which means we have to put a 10 into that formula. So we need 6 times 10 plus 17 to give us the 10th term. And 60 plus 17 will give us 77. So what you're seeing here is all the work that you would need to show for problem number one. For problem number two, again, I start by thinking, well, the numbers are going up. Maybe they are adding something. 5 plus 15 is 10, so our 5 plus 10 would be 15, but then 15 plus 10 is not 45. So they're not adding. Then I try multiplication. Well, you'd have to multiply by 3 to get 15. 15 times 3 is 45, and 45 times 3 is 135. So this one is geometric because they are multiplying by 3 each time. So you grab your formula sheet, and you find with recursive again, we need to give the first term. And to find any term, take the previous term, remember that's what a sub n minus 1 stands for, and multiply that times 3. Now, you certainly could use it that way, but that just looks kind of awkward. So most of the time, we will write the 3 out in front. And it doesn't hurt to put the parentheses there to show, hey, I know I'm supposed to multiply there. That's 3 times the previous term. Then explicit rule, well, that you grab from your sheet. Keep in mind that any of the rules that have pluses in them are going to be the arithmetic rules, and um, they also have D in them, and any that have R's in them are going to be geometric. So the first term was a 5, and we saw that they were multiplying by 3, and that is it. That is all we do to that. Now, we don't try to combine the 5 and the 3. Remember, one of those is a power and the other one isn't. So order of operations says we have to do the power first. Now, we need to know what the 10th term is. So we're looking for 5 times 3 to the 10 minus 1 power. So that will be 5 times 3 to the 9th. And that you could just crank out on your calculator, and that will give us 98,415. And again, what I'm doing is I'm showing all the work that you should show as you go through the test to get all of the points. You have to make sure that all of this good stuff is there. 
Now let me go ahead and scroll this down some more, and then you can pause the video, and you can try number three. Get all this good stuff erased. All right, I'll go ahead and go through number three. Number three says write a recursive definition for each sequence, then find the seventh term. So I see the numbers are going up, and I start thinking, well, maybe this is addition. Let's see, they're adding two. Oops, they're adding three. They're adding four. Oh, well, it's not addition. Okay. Uh, maybe it's geometric. So let's see. Um, this is kind of a weird one. So what I would do is take any term and divide it by the term before it. And if it's geometric, all of those will be equal to the same thing. Eesh, they're not. They're really, really ugly. So this is not arithmetic or arithmetic or geometric. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to make a table. Because obviously this is a, a trial and error problem here, since I did not find it to be arithmetic or geometric. Now, my first term was 15 then 17, then 20, then 24, and then 29. So I start thinking, is there a pattern somewhere in this table that would help me out? And I notice they added 2, they added 3, they added 4. Wait a minute. 15 plus 2 gives you 17. 17 plus 3 gives you 20. 20 plus 4 gives you 24. 24 plus 5 gives you 29. That's what they're doing. So now I have to describe it, and I have to tell them the first term was a 15. And to find any term, they have to take n plus the previous term. So that's all notation right there for that recursive formula. You have to use n, which is the number of the term, plus the previous term. Now if I want the seventh term, because this is recursive, it'd be easiest just to go ahead and continue on with my table here and say, all right, 29 plus 6, that's going to be 35. 35 plus 7, that's going to give me 42. And that's because this is recursive. We have to continue on with the pattern in order to get those next numbers. All right, go ahead and give number 5, 4 and 5 a try. Pause the video. Number 4 says, just find the first five terms in each sequence for both four and five. So what I do is I think, all right, well, if I put a one in, because this would be the first term, what would I get? And that would give me five. If I put a two in, what would I get? That would be a seven. I put a three in, what would I get? If I put a four in, what would I get? And I start to notice, you know what, maybe I don't need to do that every time because it's 5, 7, 9, 11, and the next one would be 13. But this is a test, and on a test, we do want to show all of the work. But it would just be a good way to check, you know, when you go through that. So over here on my answer line, I'm going to put 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13. And that's because that's how we write sequences is with that comma information. But notice I did use the correct notation when I was trying to figure out what those terms were. Now, for number five, we would do the same thing, but this one is obviously geometric. So we should have just been able to look up there and say, oh, the first term is a three, because this is a sub one times r to the n minus one, whenever you have a geometric sequence. So this one would be three times four to the two minus one, well, that's going to be 4 to the first times 3, which is 12. And then we'd have 3 times 4 to the 3 minus 1, which is going to be 4 squared, which is 16, times 3, which is 48. And again, at this point, hopefully you're thinking, well, wait a minute, they're multiplying by 4 each time. I'll just get the last two that way. But this is a test, so you want to show the work on this. So this would be 48 times 4 would give you 192, 
And again, if it's a test, just keep showing the work. Even if you do shortcut a little on your calculator and say, okay, 3 times 4 was 12, 12 times 4 is 48, 48 times 4 is 192, and 192 times 4 is 768. And again, make sure you write that with the commas because that is how we write sequences, like so. All right, good problem. So you can double check your work there. Let me erase here and scroll this up and give you a chance to do some work with six and seven. So go ahead and give those two a try, pause the video. Six and seven deal with finding the means. And when it's an arithmetic mean, what we do is add the two terms together, and then we divide by two. And I'm starting to think about my dividing by two already there. Because we're missing the middle one. So 17 plus 33 is 50, and 50 divided by two would give you 25. And of course, you can double check that. You know, this is arithmetic, so you think, oh, 17 plus something is 25. That something is eight. 25 plus eight, oh, that's 33. Good, I know I have the right answer. And the geometric mean, remember, is the square root of x times y, or a times b, whichever um, variables you want to use for this. So it's the square root of 45 times 5. And what you have to do is multiply that together, of course. That's going to give you the square root of 225. And that's going to be, we have to remember, this is a plus or minus with square roots plus or minus 15. Now the question is, do we know which one it is? Well, they could be multiplying here by one-third, but they could also be multiplying by a negative one-third. So we don't know which one that is. It could be positive 15, but it could also be negative 15. So we have to put that up here, that that could be a plus or a minus 15. And that's because we need at least one more term to know whether or not that next term would be positive or negative, and we don't have that. So we go with the information that we have. I'll go ahead and erase that, scroll up, and then you can pause the video and try a couple more of these. Go ahead and give it 8, 9, and 10. A try. All right. These say determine whether each sequence is arithmetic, geometric, or neither. Identify and label whether or not you have D or R. Um, so number eight, I notice it's going down, but it is possible they're adding a negative. So from 80 to 20, they would be adding a negative 60, but 20 plus a negative 60 is not 5. So if this is either one of them, it's going to be geometric. And if I want to know what that R value is, I take any term and I divide it by the term before it, and it has to come out to be the same thing. If it doesn't, well, then we know this isn't working. All right, so we would reduce 20 over 180 to 1 fourth, 5 over 20 to 1 fourth, and then notice I didn't do them all, but I'm trying to see whether or not this is going to work. So 5 fourths divided by 5 would be 5 fourths times 1 over 5, and that would be because, be because with fractions we always multiply by the reciprocal. The 5s will cancel out and we will get 1 fourth. And we certainly could keep going and check the other ones, but when you look at it you realize, oh look at that, they're just multiplying the denominator by 4. So yep, that's what you do when you multiply by 1 fourth. So this is geometric and R is one-fourth. Again, the work that I have over there is work that you absolutely should show as you're working through the test. Number nine, I notice these are getting to be lower and lower negatives, and I'm thinking they're probably adding a negative here or multiplying by um, a fraction, something that would make this happen because 11 divided by 8 is not something nice. But let me try addition first, and I realize they're adding a negative 3, adding a negative 3, and adding a negative 3. That makes this arithmetic or arithmetic, and 
That is a D value. Remember the Ds always show up in the formulas that deal with the arithmetic. So that would be all the work I would need to show for that one. That one absolutely shows what's going on. Number 10, the numbers are going up, so I'm thinking about addition. 9 to 13 is adding 4. 13 to 21, that's not adding 4, so that's not going to work. Then I think, well, maybe this is some goofy R value here. Uh, maybe all of these would reduce to the same thing. No, they would not. So this is neither. And we, we saw in the first section of chapter 9, which was not our favorite section, that, of course, there are, you know, all kinds of sequences that cannot be written as arithmetic or geometric. Those are our trial and error rules. All right, let me clear this off and give you a chance to look at the next group here. So give number 11 a try. Number 11 says use the given information to write an explicit arithmetic rule. I like this. They flat out told us what we need to do. So we can go ahead and grab our arithmetic rule and put in the things that we know and the things we need to find. Now, we know that we need to figure out what the first term is and what D is. I also know by looking at the information they gave us that we don't have that. We do have the first term, but we don't have D. So we're going to have to use what we have to find that. And that is, we know that if you put a 6 in for N, you are supposed to get 32. And when you look at that, you realize, hey, we've only got one variable here. We're going to be able to find D. So we'd subtract 2 from both sides, and then we would divide by 5 and that would give us 6. So now we're ready to go ahead and write the rule. a sub n equals 2 plus n minus 1 times 6. Distribute from the right-hand side. And we'll get 6n minus 4. So there's our explicit rule. And then, of course, to find the tenth, we're going to take 6 times 10 and subtract 4. So that's going to be 60 minus 4, which is 56. Nice that they gave us exactly what we were supposed to do. Go ahead and read through number 12. Pause the video. See what you can find. Number 12 says, use the given information to write an explicit geometric rule. So again, I go right to my formula, and I realize I don't know what R is. I do know the first term. And I can use that to figure out what R is. So now what I'm going to do is say, I do know the first term is 400. And I know that if we put a 4 into this formula, we are supposed to get 2 fifths. All right. Well, now I'll go ahead and divide both sides by 400. And that will give me a very teeny little point zero zero one which is, of course, 1 1,000th. 1, and 4 minus 1 is 3. And then I'd have to go ahead and take the cubed root of both sides. And with cubed root, we don't have to do any plus or minus. And that will give me 1 tenth, which I'm going to write as a fraction since this problem came with fractions. Notice we have a to the a sub 4 equals 2 fifths. So now I can just go over here and write it because I know the first term was 400. And I know what R is, it's one-tenth. And again, that we don't try to combine anything else there because the order of operations says we have to do the powers before we can do anything else. And then uh, we are supposed to figure out what the seventh term is. So A sub 7 would equal 400 times one-tenth to the 7 minus 1, which is going to be 400 times one-tenth to the 6. And that you could just plop in your calculator. And um, I believe this one gives you a scientific notation. I think it says 4 times 10 to the negative 4th. But that, of course, means we need to move the decimal over. Um, for 4, we need to move the decimal over 4 places to the left to make this smaller, since it's a negative exponent. So 1, 2, 3, 
four is where the new decimal place would go. And of course, we're going to use zeros for our placeholders there. So there we are. All right, let me clear this and scroll up and give you a chance to work on number 13. Go ahead, pause the video, and try number 13. Number 13 is telling us flat out that this is a finite arithmetic series, so arithmetic series. And almost automatically, I start to write the rule, and then I find my formula. Remember, this one has addition in it um, for the sum of a finite arithmetic series. Now, I start thinking, what do I need? And immediately I realize, I don't know what term 209 is. Well, that's why I need this rule. I have to use the rule to figure out which term that 209 is. So I start by putting in the first term and figuring out what they're adding every time. And I notice they're adding 8. So my rule will be 17 plus 8n minus 8, which is 8n plus 9. And I need to know what number for n will give me 209. So I'd subtract 9 from both sides and divide by 8. And it's just like saying if you have $2 and divide it into 8, you're going to have a quarter, so 25 cents. So that means the n that I need for this formula is going to be 25. I know the first term, it was 17, and I know the last term. So the, really, the only thing I had to do any math for at all uh, was figuring out that 25. The rest of this is, is going to go pretty doggone slick. So 209 plus 17, and that's going to give us 226. And then we go ahead and take 25 divided by 2 times 226, and that comes out two for number 13, 2,825. So often with arithmetic, you have to do both the series formula and the rule in order to find everything you need. Now, um, number 14, go ahead and give it a try. Pause the video. Number 14 says find the sum of the finite series, and this is not arithmetic. That's not n to the first, that's n to the third. And it's not geometric, because geometric is supposed to look like this, you know, where we have two things being multiplied together and we have a power that we're dealing with. That means this one has to be done by hand. So I'm going to have to figure out what all the terms are, and I use the lower and upper limits to tell me which terms to try, and this said from 1 to 7. So what I'll have to do is put a 1 in here, put a 2 in here, a 3 in here, and maybe I'll notice a pattern by that point, and I won't have to keep doing all of this. But if you put a 1 in, 1 cubed is 1, and 1 plus 2 is 3. If you put a 2 in, 2 cubed is 8, and 8 plus 2 is 10. If you put a 3 in, 3 cubed is 27, 27 plus 2 is going to be 29. And hopefully at this point you realize, well, I'm just going to put it in cubic and add 2. So 4 cubed is 64, plus 2 is 66. 5 cubed is 125, plus 2 is 127. And now we're getting to the ones where you probably uh, don't have the cubes memorized. So 6 cubed, um, 6 times 6 times 6, plus 2, well it's 216 plus 2, so that's 218. And then for 7, 7 cubed plus 2, well 7 cubed is 343, plus 2 is 345. And this is a series, so that means we have to add all of these together. So if you add all of those terms together, you get 798. And here is where I wanted to put my calculator up here, um, just to remind you that we do have a way to check on the calculator. And that comes from second stats math Number five, second stats ops 
number 5, because notice that's telling us that we have the sum of a sequence. And the rule for this one was n cubed plus 2, but we had talked in class about how it's easier to just go ahead and use x and tell your calculator you're using x, where the, the first one that we want to start with, um, our first term here, is a 1, because that was the first term. And we want to find 1 through 7 going by 1s and enter. And there it is. So we know that our answer is right. And that's just a good way to double check whether or not you have the older calculator, calculators like I was using in class when we did this or the newer ones, which is what you're seeing here on my smart board. Um, that's the one that had everything all nice and vertically lined up for us there. And that's a wonderful thing to do before you turn your test in. Oops, got a lot of stuff showing up here right now. Escape out of there. And get this to scroll. There we go. All right, 15 and 16 says... Using series formulas, find the sum of the finite series. So go ahead and pause the video and give those two a try. Number 15 is arithmetic, and the reason I know that is because that is an n to the first. So I want the sum of, let me write the formula out first before throwing numbers there, um, the sum of the first n terms to be n over 2, where I have the first term and the last term. Now, to figure out how many terms I need for n, I have to take upper limit minus lower limit plus 1. So 22 minus 1 plus 1 is going to give us 22. So this is the sum of 22 terms, where the first one, well, I'm going to find it by putting a 1 into this formula. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 5 is 3. Then I have to figure out what the last term will be. So I have to put a 22 in here, and that will be negative 44 plus 5, which is going to give me negative 39. And you can do a little bit of this math in your head here, because that's going to be 11. And, of course, you could take negative 39 plus 3, and that's negative 36. And then punch it into your calculator for a grand total of negative 396. But again, this is another one that we could check on the calculator by second stats, math, number five, find the sum. And then second stats, ops, number five. And then we're just going to go ahead and put our negative 2x plus 5 in there. Being careful to use the negative button. That's x, and we want this for 1 to 22 in steps of 1, by integers of 1. And enter. And there's that negative 396. So again, if you remember that for the test and you're able to punch that in, then you know that you have the answer right. But without the work, you're not going to get any points, so make sure you show the work. Number 16 I recognize as a geometric sequence because that's a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. And while this formula is easier to work with, it is a bear to punch in. So be extra careful if you're going to use the calculator for this one. So I have 10 minus 1 plus 1, and that's going to give me 10 terms. Where the first one, well, a sub 1 is the number in front. It's a 3. And you certainly could just go ahead and put a 1 in for n to see what you're going to get as well there. If you do that, 1 minus 1 is 0, 2 to the 0 is 1, and 1 times 3 is 3. And they're multiplying by whatever is being raised to the power there is r, so 2, and that's going to be to the 10th, over 1 minus 2. Now, just like I said in class, if you want to punch this whole thing in, you have to use all those parentheses to make that happen. Myself, I do this math in my head. 3 divided by negative 1 is negative 3. And then it's not such a mess to punch in. And you could certainly take a second now and, and punch that in and see what you get. It should come out to 3,069. And this is one where, again, you could use the calculator, second stats, 
Math number five. Second stats. Ops number five. And we need to give it the formula that we want it to use. So that would be three times two to the, and this is really important that you use those parentheses right there, because the calculator needs to know that we want three times, oh, it didn't take the two. Let me check and see why it didn't do that. Three times two. There we go. To the x minus one, it just didn't like that. Still using that variable of x. Um, we're going one to ten terms. And on down. Now, um, when you take a look at this one, you again see we get the answer that we would have gotten by hand. So you need to do the math by hand, but it's a test. You know, double check your answers. Make sure everything is good before you go ahead on to the next problem. Make sure that everything is exactly like it should be. I have now scrolled up for 17, 18, and 19. So go ahead and pause the video and work through those. What we're trying to figure out in these is if these are infinite geometric series, you'll notice that by the dot, dot, dot at the end of each one of these um, series. And they're series because we see addition. But it says that some of these we're not going to be able to do. Remember, if it converges, that's a good thing. We can find it. But if it diverges, if it just continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger, then there's nothing we can do. So for number 17, I do see that it's getting smaller, which is good. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to figure out what is that common ratio. And the good news is, in this one, it's a one-half. So I grab my formula, my little teeny formula, for the sum of a geometric series. And I'm going to put in the first term, which is 30, over 1 minus 1 half. Well, that's going to be 30 over 1 half. And when you multiply, I'm sorry, when you divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. So that's really going to give me 60. So this one converges, and the sum is 60. So if the numbers are have a common ratio here, where they're moving further and further down by that same common ratio, then it will converge. Number 18, I would want to take negative 225 over 675, 75 over negative 225, and negative 25 over 75. And you could just use your calculator and punch those in and then hit math number one. And every time that you do that, you're going to see here um, that we are taking this times a negative one third. So that is our R value right there. And that does mean that this converges. And so what we need to do is go ahead and put it into the formula. So we have a sub 1. Let me switch colors here so this stands out a little bit more. 675 over 1 minus a negative 1 third. Well, that's going to be 675 divided by 1 minus a negative 1 third is 1 plus 1 third. And since 1 is 3 thirds, that will give us 4 thirds. And actually, you know, you wouldn't have to do any of the rest of this by hand because you certainly could just punch it into your calculator. But we're going to need either 675 divided by 4 thirds or 675 times 3 fourths. All right, so let me get this up here. And like I said, how you want to punch it in, it doesn't matter as long as we are able to get what we need. So 675 divided by parentheses 4 thirds, or 675 times 3 fourths. Gives us the same thing, 506.25. So it did converge. Again, that's because our R value ended up being a negative one third. And we just had to go ahead and do the math in order to figure out what we needed to put into our very nice little formula for the sum of an infinite 
geometric series. Now, number nine, uh, we take a look at this one, and I notice they're multiplying by four each time. Well, that's not a fraction between zero and one, so we can't find this. It is going to continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So this formula, this sequence, um, series, I should say, diverges, and we are not going to be able to find the answer. So the first two we could, both of them converged because R was a fraction between zero and one. Um, but if it is a number that's bigger than one, then we just can't find it. That's because it's going to continue to grow and grow and grow. And if you think you found the last term, you're wrong because there'll be another last term when you find the next one. Now, 20 and 21, um, go ahead and pause the video and give those a try. Determine whether each series is arithmetic or geometric, then evaluate the finite series for the specified number of terms. I notice in number 20 the numbers are going up, and I notice between the first two they're adding 6. So I try that out and I see, yep, they're going to keep adding 6 here. And I know right away, if you're working with the arithmetic, you're going to need the rule. So the first term is a 2, and I found that they're adding 6. Distribute from the right-hand side, and we get 6n minus 4. Now, they wanted to figure out the sum of the finite series, and as soon as I write the formula down, I realize it was a good thing I have the rule because I have to figure out what that last term is going to be. So they wanted n equals 10, which is a really nice number to work with. We know the first one, but we don't know the last one. And so that is the 10th term. So what I have to do to get that is I have to put a 10 into this. So to get a sub 10, I have to put 6 times 10 minus 4 in for that last term. And 60 minus 4 will be 56. So now I could go ahead and do a little bit of math in my head if I wanted to and just do 5 times 58 on the calculator, and that's going to be 290. So this one was definitely arithmetic, arithmetic, and the sum would be 290. Number 21, 3 to a negative 12. So you think, well, what's going to make that happen? Well, that'd be adding a negative 15. That's not happening here. The next number is 48. So now I check to see, is this geometric? Well, let's see. They're multiplying by negative 4, then they're multiplying by negative 4, then they're multiplying by negative 4. And again, if you can't see that, what you want to do is take negative 12 and divide it by 3, see what you get. Take 48 divided by negative 12, see what you get. Take negative 192 divided by 48. You're going to see that your R value here is negative 4. Now, they want the first eight terms. So the sum for this one is a sub 1 times 1 minus R to the n over 1 minus R. And we have eight terms where the first one is a 3. We know that they're multiplying here by negative 4. And they want eight of them. And we use that R value again. So if you use double parentheses, you could punch that in right now. Myself, I would do 1 minus a negative 4 is 1 plus 4, which is 5. So I would punch in 3 fifths times 1 minus a negative 4 to the eighth and let my calculator give me that one. And this is going to end up being negative 39,321. So this one was geometric. They were multiplying by 4. And we have negative 39,321 for the answer to that one. All right. A lot of good stuff so far. One last question problem to prep you for for this test and it is a it is a word problem but like we talked about with the word problems all the way through this particular chapter they're really just formula problems so go ahead and read through this one and pause the video 
Number 22 says, on October 1st, a gardener plants 40 bulbs. On October 2nd, she plants 44 bulbs. On October 3rd, she plants 48 bulbs. She continues in this pattern until October 15th when she plants the last bulbs. And what I've noticed already is that this is definitely arithmetic, arithmetic, and that D is 4. That's what's going on. So A says, write an explicit formula to model the number of bulbs she plants each day. That's the rule. And this rule is not tough to do. You just need to know the first time it was 40 bulbs, and they continued to go up by 4. And then we go ahead and distribute the 4 and combine like terms. So there is our explicit rule. A sub n equals 4n plus 36. Then B says, how many bulbs will the gardener plant on October 15th? Well, that's 15 days later because this started October 1st, so we want to know what is the 15th term. It doesn't say all together, it just says on the 15th day. So 4 times 15 is 60, and 60 plus 36 is 96 bulbs. And that is the practice test for the Chapter 9 test.